Thank you. And now let me introduce uh, an expert, a landscape architect, a biologist, Alexander Sergeyev. Good afternoon. I'm not going to talk about lights. I'll be talking about uh, the topics discussed yesterday. I don't think it's a big issue, though. You know, the gardens of today. To begin with, I believe that we should uh, consider that the garden of today is a garden which uh, satisfies some um, core principles prevalent now. Well. Maybe I'm erroneous, maybe that's not the way to put it, because uh, we don't have any dominating outlook of this. No, this is kind of dynamic, things come and go, and uh, so the garden of uh, today is uh, uh, something uh, which is uh, well, in accordance with the new ideas and thoughts. A few years ago, a customer came, they had uh, a small plot, in the forest. The forest was beautiful with the pine trees, big like that, the old ones, and there they had a lot of uh, stones, and these stones covered almost uh, the whole area. Well, they're bigger than I can show, and they are deep in the ground. The low-growing uh, plants and bushes uh, were well preserved, we wanted to keep it, and we decided that we would keep it. But when we met, he said, uh, later on, when, when are you going to have a lawn for me? And I said, why a lawn? We are not making a lawn, why do you want a lawn? And he said, I want it to be in order. And I started telling him that uh, these are multi-component systems, that it is well arranged and information, entropy and so on. And he listened to this and he said, OK, no loan. OK, no loan. After that, sometime later we came again and he said, when are we going to have a loan? And I said it all again and I convinced him again. And this happened uh, three or four times, uh, the same things. After that, well, and you know, technically speaking, you couldn't make any loan there with those stones. Then he left. I don't know, maybe somebody made a loan for him. A few years ago, so this happens a few years ago. Now people are coming and they say that uh, we want uh, to go into the forest uh, out of our home. We want to go to the nature. We don't need flowers, we don't need uh, vegetables, we don't need any greenhouses. And uh, we say, okay, maybe no lawn. They say, no lawn, sure. No lawn. Why? Why lawn in the forest? Uh, we shouldn't do it. So I believe that we might say, to an extent, that uh, the garden, which has some natural elements to it, is a, a kind of a temporary garden. But we cannot use, uh, you know, small plots for nature. Well, I am from Yekaterinburg. We, you, we live in the southern Taiga area. Well, you know, if you have the small uh, land, you cannot have uh, three or four people living there because uh, they will destroy all the nature and they will stamp it out. So we should arrange it in such a way, there's 15, 20, 100 square meters. Uh, this should be um, a garden which kind of replicates nature, but it shouldn't necessarily be just like uh, real nature outside of the fence. So this uh, new garden we are building is something people don't know. So this is um, not uh, based on the lawn and uh, uh, well-cut uh, uh, round uh, shrubs. 
We don't have uh, any tradition of maintaining these new gardens. Well, in this uh, garden, the gardener is a good guy. Uh, he is uh, full of work ethics, and he said, well, when we look at it, it's real heaven on earth. When some weeds were coming, and it was getting to the critical moment. So, well, gardeners are conservative. They want to do things they're used to. So the customer may like the things he can see, but they don't have an idea of the things to be taken uh, and actions to be taken uh, to achieve the results or interim results. Or have you have loans, or if you have a bush which is usually cut in some or pruned in some way, like a hemisphere or a bowl, and if you don't do it timely, then well, if the gardener doesn't do it, then the customer will draw his attention to this. And I mean, by the gardener, I mean many practitioners. It can be the owner of the garden or it can be a hired person or it can be our type of expert. Anyway, these are people who don't uh, have any designer education or ergonomic education. So, well, in the best case, this is uh, an honest and uh, neat and hardworking person. Neither he nor the customer can see the interim results which are advisable. So they believe it's beautiful, but as a matter of fact, this is quite catastrophic in terms of uh, weeds removal, because here we can see a lot of labor for removing weeds to be spent. So they cannot see it, and uh, we can run into a situation when it's um, difficult to recover, and this might ask for much more resources. And if it's a newly built garden, so you can see the same place after in, in uh, the summer. So we covered it later in uh, autumn, so this is the spring next year. So this is not clear, and the customer doesn't uh, understand uh, the result, the final result. Well, this is not uh, really a final result. So it's a kind of a decorative plateau, and the gardener and the customer have no idea of what it is, how to maintain this garden. The gardener is not an innovator, and the customer is not an innovator. The innovator is only the author. That's why the author should participate in uh, maintaining the garden. Well, when we cannot complete the garden and say, and now we are done, we have done it well, and now, please do the standard uh, maintenance and your garden will be in a good shape. So we don't have any um, standard set of maintenance activities. Yeah, maybe it will be coming with time. See, the author cannot do all the maintenance because it will be too costly for the owner and the author will uh, not uh, build any new gardens. They will have no time for this. This means that uh, we need to segregate our jobs into the things uh, which uh, require a high level of skills and decision making. And this is these are not only horticultural things which are really important, but primarily artistic things. And uh, all the and uh, the other group of uh, jobs would be uh, easy to do jobs when you can uh, describe it in good instructions. So we have to do this split of different jobs, and uh, the garden should be designed in such a way that uh, these uh, maintenance jobs uh, can be really split, and then uh, most of the job in terms of time can be done by the gardener and the customer. And uh, we can only play a role in the jobs when the author is uh, required or the design is required. 
So this is the same garden. The gardens using some natural elements. We split them into two types, which are different. This garden, I believe, can be called a garden for detailed maintenance. This means that to an extent, oh, this goes against things mentioned yesterday. This means that we can do the things which are different from the natural things. I mean, if we stop maintaining this garden, it will quickly change into this. Yeah, this is taken from outside the fence. So we live in the taiga area. And people change from monkeys into people in some other places, not in the taiga. It's more difficult to live in the taiga because it's um, wet and dark. Gardens like that have some features which let us uh, maintain them in a good shape without degradation. A short list of plants. Uh, the plants are mono-planted, so we don't have mixtures. And we have quite a good access to um, any part of the garden. This is important for maintenance. And the area shouldn't be too big. Here, the area is uh, 1,700 square meters, I believe. That's what you see outside the fence. This used to be used uh, for um, planting cabbage or beetroot. Now you can see that weeds have come. If you don't do anything in 10 plus years, some small trees will come and later on there will be a mixed forest here. And now that's the way it looks. Let me describe it. We have a small lawn here. When I first met the customer and we talked about our concept, I started with saying that all the function of the lawn can be implemented by this small lawn, 22 square meters. It's uh, easier to mourn, it has organized edges. We have uh, a simple set of uh, bridge paths, so we have a lot of snow. And uh, so they clean gravel sometimes, and uh, this uh, bridge is uh, easier to clean than gravel. So we have uh, pavings, we have uh, wooden paths, and we have these uh, functional pathways. We try to do it in such a way that they don't lo look like pathways. So the whole soil is covered by hom homogeneous uh, cover materials, so we don't see any pathways here. So we go from the terrace to this uh, white uh, space and we start uh, moving around this place, moving by broader pathways and we can go to the narrow pathways when we like it or when we do maintenance. So how we split our jobs with the gardener? The major jobs to be done would be removing weeds uh, from the gravel surfaces. So we show the areas which uh, shouldn't have uh, any plants at all. So any plant here should be removed. And uh, we also show the gardener the plants uh, planted. We'll have so many of them and they are easily remembered. Any plant which is not part of the list should be removed from any place. This is uh, easy to understand. So 
So you just should be careful and uh, work hard. So these gardeners uh, are several and they work in shifts and they work well. But the only problem is when the customer starts giving them some other jobs. But overall, they do it pretty well. Let's proceed. These uh, pathways uh, are branchy and they lead us to the places we want to go and they have uh, small branches going to other places and, uh, and we have uh, gravel and um, we have some hard rock. Uh, we can put furniture there and uh, this is the look from the entry stairs. So you can see uh, the pathway and the branches of this pathway which uh, let us uh, maintain the garden. We usually go there twice a year, so, well, we come often, me and Irina, just to have a look whether it's fine and to do some, to give some recommendations. And the job, the so-called uh, artistic uh, plants removal work is done twice a year. We usually come uh, twice uh, in the summer, uh, a group of ten. So. We do this, for instance, the things we have here, this place. So uh, we put uh, here some of the plants and uh, we decide which to leave, which to remove. For instance, um, the carnation is put here and we remove it uh, the way we like, uh, artistically. And uh, we add things, we remove things depending on, on our artistic feeling. So everyone is cutting these plants. We discuss uh, things uh, to remove and to leave. And uh, so what we are going to remove. And uh, so we do it uh, in two days. And here is my final slide. You can see a good picture of this pathway and the major pathway when it's prepared and the branches uh, which uh, are used for looking at this. As for the biodiversity, well, it's not high here, talking about plants. At the same time, I don't think it's an issue. And uh, we have a lot of insects here and birds. And uh, uh, the birds go to the pine trees. Uh, this is uh, a dog, a uh, chasing the birds, but he cannot get uh, the nests. So it's quite uh, dynamic, and the smell uh, is um, quite good and strong, including the thyme smell. Here you can see another product, uh, gravel, uh, double pathway system, some short functional pathways from the major home to the um, summer kitchen, and it contrasts with the gravel pathways, and this um, makes the gravel pathways uh, seen uh, not as pathways, but uh, as some natural places which are not yet covered by grass. Uh, the gardener removes the weeds. We also come uh, for some artistic uh, functions and uh, the gardener also has to uh, remove the cones and uh, here is uh, another view outside of the fence. And uh, so when you don't go outside of the fence, this looks like the natural forest, which doesn't look like our forest, as a matter of fact. The next forest, built on the same principle, and it is not gravel, uh, but rather um, bark, we have here, and uh, so they don't uh, remove uh, the cones, then don't uh, remove 
the needles. And this is outside. Well, this looks quite beautiful. But this is not in the garden. Why so? This uh, natural environment is not good for walking. And it doesn't look like that in the, in the fall or in the in the spring. So this is half or the first half of the summer. Uh, the summer is short in our case. And it is uh, difficult to control. And this is our garden. You can walk around it. And when we remove lawns, well, in lawns, the good thing is that, one of the good things, is that you can walk on it. And here you can also walk. And spring and in autumn, this uh, looks uh, well, and this is easily controlled. And here you can see some other pathways, apart from the pathways made of uh, bark. One more approach. So we haven't done a lot uh, here. We co call it uh, conventionally stable gardens. Here, the plants community is uh, similar to the natural one. Maintenance uh, is less intensive here, but it is uh, less controlled, and you cannot walk here because you will stamp it out. So you can walk when you do maintenance, but not uh, too intensively. We believe that this approach asks for well, sustainable elements of the composition. So in this uh, overall system, there should be some elements which uh, do not change and don't disappear. They are architecture elements, which are prominent. And uh, if they're small, it's better. And the plants as well. Well, they haven't grown uh, yet uh, here. And uh, you can see them small um, silver fir trees. When they grow, it will be more structural. So we are trying to build um, a structure using the stable elements. And this structure should uh, let us treat this uh, uh, lower plants changes uh, with more patience. So we understand that diff different things uh, might emerge here. This is outside of the fence. So this is the initial plot when we started dealing with it. And you can see the silver firs planted here. There was a small part uh, outside of fence where we didn't change anything. Or rather, it was uh, it was changed uh, when they built uh, the house. They removed uh, the soil. So this is the dark northern uh, slope. We had to recover it. We built the gallery. We recovered uh, plants. When we planted all that, we see that it was growing. Uh, we picked the things which grew well. And we tried to remove all the rudial uh, plants. So we decide what to remove uh, for the first time. What is the most uh, threatening thing? So we remove it and we um, show it to the gardener, the things to remove. Well, this is more difficult than in the previous stage. That's why we do it gradually. We say, OK, Edik, that's the name of the guy, uh, here you can see the nettle, please remove it, and uh, please uh, remove it, uh, remove um, the dandelion, and um, well, he does it. Then we see that uh, some other things um, come, like uh, glakes, some other things. We say, and now, apart from that, so continue removing this and remove this, and uh, he remembers this pretty well. 
and uh, so here here is at the at the rear and uh, with time this happens so they are removed but well we speed up the process and um, this way so we don't only add plants we also welcome the coming from outside and from the forest and this part this very part which wasn't impacted uh, is a place uh, which is kind of a source for coming of these natural plants one more thing we are still working on the same approach this was the condition in autumn you can see the residual forest it was protected to save it from the developers now we are adding plants uh, sustainable elements of the composition we, can, we have uh, pine trees and we have a good architecture we started uh, picking the plants to remove this year the owners of the plant will do this they'll remove the weeds that's uh, what it looked like I'd like to conclude with this scary picture you might see that there is nothing to conserve here but that's not exactly the case as we have seen Mama thing going back to some other speeches on the APPM conference some people said there that dealing with the private customers uh, is not a business uh, it's a nuisance we should go to the developers that's where the real business is done well we haven't engaged with the developers but I can't imagine going to a developer saying okay let us run an experiment we don't know what is going to come out of it but let us run it let us do it this or that way and uh, I believe that the outcome will be like that for these reasons but uh, well but I'm not sure let's have a look let's wait and see and uh, I don't think the customer will say have a go I believe that well our customers who say okay go ahead uh, they they're happy with the outcome Thank you. Good afternoon. You have uh, quite a lot of uh, pine trees. Sometimes they are protected uh, uh, from storms by the low growing trees how do you decide uh, which uh, tree is going to survive and which is to be which one is to be removed well I don't believe that the low growing trees really um, save um, the high trees from storms so we hardly remove any lo low growing grass and uh, trees they're usually removed uh, by the construction work we hardly remove uh, any trees well, only the ill ones, which are going to die anyway. And quite often, by the way, we can say, we invite special experts. They say, this uh, tree is doomed. And the customer says, it's still alive. Let it leave some time. And then we'll see. When, is, when it's worse uh, in condition, then we will remove it. OK. Building a garden like that. Uh, with this approach uh, is not questionable here here is my question do the customers uh, come to you with this uh, requirement or do they know that you have this reputation those who make this nature-like gardens or do you spend a lot of time and uh, effort and convincing effort to convince them that this is the type of garden to be built and uh, how many people if you look at all your gardens and all your customers 
how many people or what's the share of those who come to you with this requirement and those who get this uh, garden the way they want it since we all know that uh, our people like uh, you know uh, blooming flowers and uh, they like well peonies well, gardens like that are not for the you know they're not for everyone they are for kind of advanced people that's my understanding so this is not for everyone not all customers uh, would want it thank you when we show the portfolio well we don't only show so the idea of the portfolio is not only the things we have done these are also the things we want to do we don't only design gardens like that we also start with showing what we want to do next so that people come to us with this understanding and this impression and I believe that people come with these uh, requirements primarily because they know that we do things like that as for the share I didn't quite get the question well yesterday we calculated that uh, the gardens we have well this is a long process every garden takes a few years and the gardens will start uh, next year so they're not the gardens we are going to complete next year we cannot build uh, 15 gardens in a year but if we take the 15 gardens we uh, engage with starting next year or this year 2020 from this list seven gardens have this request no loan so this uh, almost everyone with the exception of one uh, so almost all of them with the exception of one are in the forest microphone please yeah about 50 percent microphone please most probably you have some other gardens that's what i mean sure we are okay with that yeah that's not what I'm talking about if you come to a customer uh, to a plot with the pine trees or with a beautiful landscape you remember the river and the tiger on the other bank and you understand that that's the way to do it this or that thing but the customer um, cannot see your point how difficult is it to bring the message home to them or with your reputation of those who build natural gardens so maybe you don't attract people like that or maybe you can convince them with your authority well I have talked about the way we tried to convince one customer and they failed well as a matter of fact if you fail to convince people quickly well my idea is that you should try to convince uh, the customer properly uh, without simplifying things so you should talk it talk about it uh, in detail with the difficult things and if the customer buys this that's fine but if you have to convince uh, and they are half convinced uh, but then they talk to some other guys uh, their relatives they come back and say you know my relatives uh, said this and that well you know I don't think that we should be too stubborn here because a customer like that cannot be redesigned because we'll start working and then again they will want to go back to their initial basic assumptions usually when we do this natural gardens these are usually people who want it and that's not because of us they are ready for these solutions let me chip in a little bit sure we want uh, peonies and uh, some other flowers because we have uh, the grannies and the relatives so it's really important to listen to people from the early stage and if we have this request or if we believe that it might come later we should 
views the facade areas and some other places. So you can find a place uh, for plants like that to be used in the garden. But the important thing is to convey the role. So this is the professional role of us to convey this, to open the eyes, to show what might happen. Because, well, the customers, well, in Moscow and in St. Petersburg it can be different. But in our case, the customers don't even know what can be done quite often. That's why our mission is to show that it can be realistically done. And one of the guys uh, who, uh, uh, one of the gardens we have seen uh, is about six years old now. And at that time, it was one of the first tries. And we said, OK, uh, let us try to have no lawn. We know how to do it. And uh, by the way, the thing which uh, should work yeah, might be like you don't need any morning uh, for uh, the lawn, so less man maintenance. And uh, the customer said, OK, have a go, so you can show what can be done. And, uh, and you should listen to people. This is uh, really important. And uh, one more thing, this uh, very plot. So this is uh, the place uh, which has uh, the uh, Barrack covering the surface. There isn't any garden there. That's where we maintain the garden. So one of our guys go there, and uh, so he's also kind of uh, the guy who does the job. And uh, we do we we do know uh, the time needed. Last year it was 73 work hours. So I believe this is uh, quite good. And uh, I believe. Yeah, one more thing to mention. Please uh, design the gardens considering the way they are going to maintain, to be maintained. And it should be designed this way. If it is um, difficult and complex in terms of plants, then there should be something maintaining this. So we split these jobs into two groups. So it's really important to, do, to be done from the onset, to think about it and to develop it like that. And I have a question on your plant uh, on the river bank, the ground work. How difficult was it? Uh, how thick uh, should be this uh, gravel layer? So is it really? Um, convenient. And how many years has this um, garden lived? I believe five or six years. And uh, is it low maintenance or high maintenance? Well, the work of the gardener can be limited to one hour a day. So it's either one day a week, removing the weeds, or one hour every day. Apart from that, uh, it's two days we spend. So it's uh, two days, uh, two days when they bring a team of ten. And how thick uh, is uh, the filling? Well, we have a dirt textile there because uh, we have um, gravel and so the, the filling is a uh, thing. And we have about uh, one to three centimeters uh, of um, filling. And uh, we all have uh, crushed stone and uh, then we have uh, gravel on top of it. And uh, one more important thing is that uh, when we use uh, uh, the smoothing materials, uh, the bigger stones uh, come up. The crushed stone and the gravel and uh, some other stones uh, come up. So we know this dog, it's very active. And after this um, dog, you should uh, somehow fix it uh, and w when you fix it uh, the gravel comes to the surface and uh, the, um, 
the grass goes uh, to the bottom. Uh, wh what about irrigation? Well, when we started, uh, it was uh, hot, so we irrigated it. Now we can irrigate, but now we irrigate um, nothing but uh, the the lawn. And we use a movable thing uh, for watering it. Okay, comparing this uh, gravel project and uh, and this. Uh, other project uh, in the forest. Let me clarify it. Uh, did you pick this aesthetics on purpose? I mean, it's uh, kind of a southern gravel-based um, cotton. So this gives you a southern-like impression with the backdrop of this northern forest. Or was it just a technical requirement of uh, walking there without uh, a lawn? And one more question. When we talk about nature, so we talk uh, about uh, the high maintenance things. You need to remove the gravel, to remove the weeds. Uh, you need to remove the traces after the dogs, and so on. So how natural is it? So is it more net visual uh, in this case? So I mean, when you pick uh, the plants uh, without, uh, say, the water requirements. I mean, what is nature here? Okay, no coffee break and no round table for some of us. Okay, uh, nature is in the image. Yeah, plants are there. Plants should be uh, sustainable. And uh, when I say that, well, this is an important garden, so it's natural, it uh, replicates nature, and uh, these are images from some other places. So why? Why have we done it? Well, because we wanted to. So was it your, your idea? Yeah, it was my idea. And I can even go further to say that uh, one of the one of the issues we discussed with the customers we discussed the concept. Uh, one of the strongest arguments was just to say, I want to do it like that. I tell them, you know, I want it to look like that in your plot.